Joining us now on Outside the Book is Alma Katsu. Her new book is The Descent. It's the third novel in her The Taker trilogy, following The Taker and The Reckoning. Her first novel, The Taker, was named a top 10 debut novel by the American Library Association. And she comes to writing after some 30 years as an intelligence analyst for the United States government. Alma, thanks for being with us on Outside the Book. Thank you for having me. This is the third book in a trilogy. Did you set out to write a trilogy? No, I didn't. The <laughs> first book, The Taker, was meant to be a standalone. But um, in the course of writing it, uh, my agent had asked for a revision that really changed the nature of one of the characters. And after we did that revision, I saw that there was a continuation to the story, uh, but it wasn't to the characters I thought it would be. It was to the villain. And it ends up being sort of the villain story for the next two books. So that's where that came from. Are you sure that that story is done at this point? I, well, you know, actually I did come up with an idea for a fourth book, but you can't have a fourth book in a trilogy. <laughs> well, that's right. So maybe someday down the road, yeah. <laughs> Um, your work is sometimes described, maybe by other people, as a, as a mix of genres. Uh, what does that mean, and do you agree with it? I have to say I do agree with it. I'm not exactly sure what it means. The books are very different. So they've been compared to everything from early Anne Rice, like Interview with the Vampire, yeah. to The Historian, which most people would think of more as literary fiction, to Diana Gabaldon's The Outlander oh. series, and... Um, the Time Traveler's Wife by Audrey Niffenegger. I think what this means to me is it, it has a lot of elements. It's not exactly like any of those books. It's more mainstream fiction, but it has elements of historical and fantasy um, and a little romance, too. I came across an intriguing quote from you. Um, you said, I love big, fat, daring fiction. Yes. What's big, fat, daring fiction? Well, I like to think that my books are big, fat, <laughs> daring fiction. But, you know, I grew up reading a lot of the classics that a lot of other people read, you know, like Alexander Dumas and Edgar Allan Poe. You know, I like really big, interesting stories that you can get into. Some people might not classify Edgar Allan Poe as quite that way. But, you know, we always had a very unique story. You know, he's, he was really the father of a lot of, you know, the, the mis murder mystery and that sort of thing. So, you know, I like challenging fiction. I like complex characters. I like really rich characters. I like stories that surprise you. So I, I you know, I tend towards those really big stories. And I hope readers do too. Well, but in particularly in that sense, how does, how does the creative process work for you? I mean, do you see stuff in newspapers? Do you just totally make stuff up out of your head? Where, do you sort of go off by yourself for an hour and intentionally be creative? How does it work for you? I'd like to think it just <laughs> that I come up with it, but you know, the one thing I've learned now, I've been, the first book took me 10 years to write, because um, you know, I was really learning the process at that time. And since then, it's coming a little more quickly. I'm working on my fourth novel now, and one thing I'm finding is is that the what the stories are really about tend to come from something in the author's subconscious. It's usually something that you as a person are struggling with that maybe you're not even aware of. But, but that always seems to end up being the main problem of a book. So I have to say it just comes from deep within, whether you like it or not. <laughs> well, i got to ask you the, the obvious question. I mean, you've had 30 years as an intelligence analyst. Not everybody has a career like that. You're with <laughs> the RAND Corporation now. Um, is that a source of your work, or is what you do creatively totally independent of that? Now, I do like to think that what I write is totally independent <laughs> of that work. There's, so I'm a technologist by trade. Um, I, I work on technology issues for the government. I like to think there's absolutely no technology in my book, <laughs> you know, because they're all historical. Um, this particular series spans from uh, medieval Venice all the way to the present day. So there's very little technology in it. Um, and the book I'm working on now is set in Georgian England. It's all historical. <laughs> so, but the funny thing is, is when the first book came out and I was meeting with folks at um, Simon & Schuster, the publishers, mm -hmm. One of the folks there asked me the same question. Is there anything from the intelligence community in your books? And as I was about to say, no, I don't think so, she said, because all of the characters in it are so devious and manipulative <laughs> and secretive. And I, I thought about it and I said, you know, you're absolutely right. I hate to say it, but that is 
part and parcel, and he tells his community, it just kind of comes with the culture. <laughs> you are around people that, you know, they're always thinking, I'll put it another way, maybe not devious and manipulative, <laughs> but you're always thinking about how to control a situation, you know, all aspects of it. So there's a good bit of it. I spent most of my adult life now among people who are kind of <laughs> like that all the time. So it comes out in my characters, apparently. Amakatsu, your book is The Descent. Thanks very much for being with us on Outside the Book. Thank you for having me.